So the Mahdi will flee to Mecca, wanting Allah to protect him. Then what will happen? The next hadith. And this is the only hadith in Bukhari and Muslim that, uh, well, not the only, I should say, not the only, one of two, I should say, that indirectly mentions the Mahdi, indirectly. So this hadith is muttafaq alayh, Bukhari and Muslim, the highest level. What does it say? Aisha said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam one day he grew restless because he had a dream. And then he said, I saw something in my dream that made me restless. He's telling Aisha. It was wondrous, amazing, strange. I saw that a group of people from my ummah, they were attacking the Kaaba, And they reached the land called Al-Bayda. Al-Bayda, if you go to Haram, Mecca, Medina, you know Ajiyad? You know Ajiyad Hospital, Ajiyad Road? Before it is Bayda. So if you're going to Mecca from Ajiyad direction, before you get to Ajiyad, you will go through the land of Bayda or the valley of Al-Bayda. So the Prophet said, they will go through Al-Bayda and Allah will cause the earth to open up and the whole army will come crashing and be destroyed. This hadith is where? Bukhari and Muslim. Does it mention the Mahdi? No, no mention. What does it mention? An army of Muslims is attacking the Kaaba. Why would the army of Muslims attack the Kaaba? Go back to the last hadith in Abu Dawood, which is not in Bukhari and Muslim. A man from Medina shall flee, the Mahdi shall flee, seek refuge in the Kaaba. And the people will give him bay'ah. So then we add this hadith. The governments of the time will become terrified. Who is this political agitator? Send in the troops. This is what the 1939 group wanted to happen. This is what they banked on. We will be that group. Let the government come and Allah will destroy the army. But as we said, you cannot do that. In any case, this hadith mentions that the army will be destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, by the way, when this happens, this is the sign the Mahdi has come. Until that happens, nobody can claim to be the Mahdi. Anybody who claims to be the Mahdi is lying. Because even the Mahdi himself will say, no, no, it can't be me. I'm not good enough. He will deny it. And this is what true leadership does. True leadership, they don't want to be leaders. They will deny, no, no, like Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. He chose Abu Ubaid, Umar al Khattab. Choose them, not me. This is what the real leader does. So the Mahdi will grudgingly take the bay'ah. The army will be sent. When the army is destroyed by Allah, this is the sign. Everybody now knows this is the Mahdi. Until that happens, please brothers and sisters, don't be fooled by the sweet talk of the sweet talkers. Don't be fooled by the tongue of the vipers. There is no Mahdi that will preach he is the Mahdi. When Allah shows this sign, then we will all know that this person is indeed the uh, Mahdi. And uh, we also have the hadith as well that uh, the hadith is in the Mustaf Imam Ahmed that the Prophet said, A man shall be given the oath of allegiance between the rukun and the maqam. A man shall be given the oath of allegiance between rukun yamani and the maqam, and no one shall attack the Kaaba except its own people. I'll explain this. So do not ask about the destructions of the Arab at that point in time. And then the Ethiopians are going to come and destroy the Kaaba and it will never be worshipped after that. Now this hadith is cryptic as is most a hadith at the end of times, but it tells us a number of things. First and foremost, the Mahdi will be between the Rukun and the Maqam as we said. Uh, I made a mistake. I said Rukun Yamani, Rukun Yamani, scratch that. When the Prophet said Rukun, he means Hajar Aswad. Sorry, my mistake. My mind wasn't thinking. Whenever the Rukun is mentioned, it's the Hajar Aswad. So between the Hajar Aswad and the Maqam Ibrahim. So between the Hajar Aswad and the Maqam Ibrahim. In the time of the Prophet, you all know Maqam Ibrahim, right? You all know Maqam Ibrahim. In the time of the Prophet, the Maqam Ibrahim was attached to the Kaaba. It was connected to the Kaaba. So there was the space of five feet between the Hajar Aswad and the Maqam Ibrahim. Umar ibn al-Khattab, one year he was doing Hajj and he saw all of the crowd jostling and shoving and the Maqam was uh, making it difficult. So he said, you know what? I'll make life easier for them. I will make the Maqam 
some distance so that the hujjaj can fit between the house of Allah and the maqam Ibrahim. And he thought that was sufficient space for the hujjaj to go and do hajj. But subhanallah, that was 1440 years ago. And now, as you know, the maqam, even in low season, even if you go at 3 a.m. in the month of February, you will still find people, you know, packed between the maqam and whatnot. So this is uh, the sunnah of Umar ibn Khattab that he moved the maqam back. Otherwise, the maqam was connected to the Kaaba. Anyway, what is the phrase? And none shall attack the Kaaba except its own people. This is a blessing from Allah and a sadness to us. The blessing from Allah. No non-Muslim army will ever attack Mecca. Alhamdulillah. This is a blessing from Allah. Let all these Islamophobes give their false memes and threats and whatnot. No non-Muslim army will ever even attempt to attack Mecca. It's not going to happen. As long as there are Muslims in this world, Mecca will never be attacked by non-Muslims. But who will attack Mecca? وَلَنْ يَسْتَحِلَّ الْبَيْتَ إِلَّا أَهْلُهُ Its own Ahl will attack Mecca. And in Islamic history, there are a number of dynasties, including the current dynasty that is there. They had to physically attack and remove the Sharif family, whose great-great-great-grandson is now the Jordan site. His great-great-great-grandfather was attacked by the great-grandfather of the current king over here. And Mecca was attacked to get rid of one dynasty. It wasn't the only time. It, was, it will not be the last time as well. In the course of Islamic history, Mecca was attacked dozens of times by Muslims for politics for political dynasties and including many attacks like these ones by the fanatical groups as well and including actual wars between dynasties for the sake of kingdoms. So the Prophet ﷺ predicted, no one shall attack Mecca except its own people. And this is sadness for us, but at least some comfort that externally Allah will protect the Kaaba until there are no Muslims left in the earth. When there are no Muslims left, then what's going to happen? There shall be an army from Habasha. We'll talk about that, inshallah, in our Wednesday lectures. There shall be an army from Ethiopia that will come and destroy the Kaaba when there are no more Muslims. This is towards the end of times before the actual trumpet is blown. And that is towards the end of times after, uh, after the Muslims have uh, disappeared from earth. Of the, uh, of the characteristics of the Mahdi as well, of the characteristics of the Mahdi as well that are mentioned in the authentic hadith, is that he shall be the leader of the entire Muslim Ummah. And this is an amazing phenomenon, the likes of which we have not seen since the times of early Islam. Since the times of early Islam, our Ummah has been disunited politically since the times of really even in Ali radiallahu anhu's time, the Ummah divided up into two as we know, and the wars took place. And since that point in time, even the Khulafa, at one point in time, we had three Khulafa ruling, one of them in Cairo, one of them in Baghdad, and one of them in Andalus, in Qurtuba. We had three Khulafa, each one saying, I am Khalifatullah fil ard. And throughout Islamic history, we've had many dynasties who were acting as if they were Khulafa, even if they didn't call themselves Khulafa. The Ummah has never been united politically since the time of the Khulafa al Rashidun. But there shall come one time when it will be united again. And that will be when? It will be under the time of the Mahdi. And that point in time will be of the greatest periods known to Islamic history. Our Prophet praised the Mahdi in a number of a hadith and he said, and this is one of those hadith that is in Sahih Muslim, so it is an authentic hadith, but the word Mahdi is not mentioned. The Prophet ﷺ said, towards the end of times, there shall be a Khalifa who shall give money to the poor and he won't even count it. He's praising, it's going to be generous. And another hadith that towards the end of times, there shall be uh, the, 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 the Imam, the Imam shall be from amongst wa Imamukum Minkum. Sorry, let me rephrase that, sorry. Not towards the end of time. The hadith begins. Essentially, it translates as, can you imagine? But the wording is, how will you be? But when the Prophet said, how will you be? What it means in English is, can you imagine? Can you imagine that time? Can you imagine a time when Isa ibn Maryam will come down from the heavens? This hadith is Sahih Muslim. And your Imam is from amongst you. Wa imamukum minkum. And Isa will come down at Fajr time and he will be asked by the Imam, come lead Salah. And Isa will say, no, the Iqamah was called for you. So he will be led by one of you 
takrimatan li hadhihi al-umma as an honor to this ummah this hadith is in sahih muslim it is authentic does it mention the word mahdi no what does it mention wa imamukum minkum this is one of the most authentic ahadith about the concept of the mahdi who will have the honor that isa will come down and he is the imam who will have the honor that Isa will pray behind somebody from our ummah? That's what the Prophet said. He will be from our ummah and Isa will pray behind him. Who is that person? He is none other than the Mahdi. So the concept of the Mahdi is found in Bukhari and Muslim without the term Mahdi. But the term Mahdi is found in every single other book. In another hadith, also in Abu Dawood and Muslim Imam Ahmad, we learned that the Mahdi shall rule for seven years. In the authentic hadith, it says he shall rule for seven years. So we have a time frame as well that the Mahdi will be powerful. The Mahdi will not be alive because he's going to be alive for many years, but he will rule for seven years. So he will establish his authority, his dominion, and he will rule for seven years. We also learn, and this hadith as well is in Sahih Muslim. So this is another one of those hadith that mentions the Mahdi indirectly. We also learn that there shall be a great war taking place and the Muslims will be successful and a rumor will be spread that the Dajjal has come out. So their Imam will take the army to try to find the Dajjal, but it will be found that the rumor is not true. When they have found the rumor is not true, lo and behold, the Dajjal will come at that point in time. So we learn from this, again, the word Mahdi doesn't come. We learn from this. When will the Mahdi come? before the Dajjal. If you attended on Wednesday, my lecture series I'm giving, I said, the Mahdi is the last of the minor signs that links to the major signs. Now you understand why. The Mahdi is the last of the minor signs that links to the major signs. In the time of the Mahdi, the Dajjal will come. The Muslims will attempt to fight the Dajjal back and forth. Will they be successful? No. No one can kill the Dajjal, not even the Mahdi. Who can kill the Dajjal? Only one, and that is Isa ibn Maryam. But what will the Mahdi do? The Mahdi will provide peace and stability for the people with him. Those that are with the Mahdi, some protection will be given. Some safety will be there. And they will be running and fighting in various places. Many will die shaheed, but the group will still be there. Until the Hadith mentions in Sahih Muslim this one, the, this army will be in Damascus, in, in, in Damascus, in Damascus. And they will be praying in the Umayyad Mosque. The hadith doesn't say Umayyad Mosque. The hadith says, with the white minaret. And pretty much by unanimous consensus, the white minaret is the minaret that was built, one of the earliest masjids that is still uh, standing today and being used today is the Umayyad Mosque built by Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, 1,350 years old, the same structure, continuous masjid. And he built it with a beautiful white minaret, perhaps not even knowing the hadith. And the hadith mentions that the Muslims will pray in Damascus in front of the white minaret. And as the iqamah is given for Salat al-Fajr, lo and behold, they will see Isa coming down, holding on to two angels. And he will come down, they will pause Fajr until he comes down. You don't have to ask identity when somebody comes from the heavens, okay? It's pretty obvious who that person is going to be. You don't have to wonder already that the Dajjal has come. Already things have happened. They're waiting for him to come. They're literally waiting. When, it, when is Isa going to come? So they're there in Damascus waiting, waiting, waiting. When he comes, they know exactly who it is. So as soon as he comes down, the Imam, Hadith doesn't say Mahdi, the Imam, your Imam, will offer him the Salah and he will say, no. The iqama was given for you. You go ahead and lead. And then after this, there is no mention of the Mahdi whatsoever. This is the final mention. Why? Because obviously with the coming of Isa, the Mahdi is eclipsed now. The job of the Mahdi is done. Does he live longer? Does he die right after this? Is he alive to see the Jal killed? Not a single peep in the Hadith. Nothing goes silent. We don't know. Nobody can say anything. He might be alive till the end of times. He might die a natural death right after Fajr. We don't know. His role is gone. His job has been done. What was his job? For those seven years, 
to bring stability and izzah at a time of great tyranny. The world is having global issues. The Muslim ummah is on the decline and the Mahdi will come and cheer people up and make people realize there is hope, there is khair. Those who stick with him, they will be united with the ummah and there shall be peace where he is until the Dajjal comes. When the Dajjal comes, the Mahdi will just do whatever he can waiting for Isa to come and then Isa alayhi salam will come and take Are you tired of all these annoying ads on YouTube? Are you worried that a haram video might pop up? Well, the One Islam TV app is here to solve these problems, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is 100% free of any ads and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest or drive with your device switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets and so much more. Two to four new videos uploaded daily, inshallah. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means a small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqah jariyah, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders. Insha'Allah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.